Okay, so the question is, is there any news? We've just wasted about 18 minutes of drama. And the question is, is there any actual news? And let me see here. I do believe, <laughs> now I'm kind of confused. I got a lot of things going on in a lot of different directions. Okay, game trailer window. I got to remember how to just do a regular normal situation here. All right, is there any news? There is a little bit of news. The Echo Combat Patch Party Details. I do have this trailer. Let's see if I switch it to full screen. Let's see if this is in the right aspect ratio. Let's check this out, guys. Ten thirty a.m. Pacific time. So this has already begun. So yeah, we do have the free weekend, the beta, which is coming up today. This is today. It is live right now. So after this show is over, if you want to jump back into Echo Combat, if you want to try to get into a party with your friends, this is a, a pretty major update. So they continue to bang away. They continue to work on this ready at dawn. And so this is the map balance update, new cover in the cargo bay. And is anybody going to be jumping into this? <laughs> hybrid Energy says, uh, oh, multiplayer, Lone Echo 2, win. So Hybrid Energy, not a big fan of multiplayer gaming. But Echo Combat has been done so well. If you can get into a party with some other terrible players, you could have some fun. That is the thing about this. If you can get into a party with some terrible players, you can have some fun. So that is Echo Combat, the party patch. Um, it is live now. I'm, a, I'm guessing this is live for the rest of Thursday, for Friday, for Saturday. And then it probably ends at some point on Sunday. Are some of you, the question is, are some of you just not going to play this at all because you're just not interested? You've played it a couple times, you're just not interested. Oh shit, Unknown Fate is out? Wow, that is shocking news. So here's an opportunity. I can go to web browser with small video window and let's go ahead and look up Unknown Fate. Un, whoops unknown fate steam let's take a look at unknown fate it is fifteen dollars and yeah let's see oh no it is twelve i gotta remember to look over here but control it over there so unknown fate is twelve dollars and seventy four cents special promotion offer ends on september 13th i guess this is live right now Unknown Fate, who would have thought? Mars Lit Games, published by 1C Company. So this is Unknown Fate is out. Now with a new trailer. Alrighty, so that is exciting. I am going to see if I can grab this new trailer. Um, now i got to switch to, let's see, where do I want to be over here? Oh man, I'm switching all kinds of crap up. i got to remember where I'm at. Uh, hold on a sec, folks. I need to grab this new trailer. Um, let's look up Mars Lit. <clears throat> Unknown Fate. Um, Oh no, that is not Unknown Fate. That's some ba that's a band name, Unknown Fate. I'm trying to find the the newest trailer for Unknown Fate. Okay, it's on VR Game Critic. I don't know why this guy always gets these trailers. 
somehow and then you, i can't find where the actual like where's the developer where's unknown fate why is it so hard to sometimes find trailers that is one thing that does irritate the crap out of me okay sorry guys uh wasting time with this yeah so let's see what is going on in chat um fluke rogi says just give us free for all death match and echo combat then i'll be interested in it Steven Sale says, I suck at the game, want to play with other noobs. Yeah, I want to be in like total noob bracket with terrible players, and then it might be decent. Kev Gret says, September 18th is a huge VR day. Blind, Transference, Mars 2, Downward Spiral. Yeah, Downward Spiral on PlayStation VR and Unearthing Mars 2. That is on PlayStation VR. Transference is on everybody. Blind is on everybody. And yeah, we, we knew about this. Somebody, who was it in chat? Somebody discovered that Blind was already on the Oculus Store and they, they were like, Blind is available right now. And um, we were like, what? Blind is available right now? But it wasn't available, but it was on the Oculus Store and it did have the date of September 18th. So we actually had that like ahead of time. Like, we knew of that ahead of time, so that was kind of cool. Um, so, Unknown Fate, this should be... This is the launch trailer. So, let's go ahead and check this out. I'll put this on full screen trailer mode. Toby eye tracking. It features Toby eye tracking. So, uh, oh, so this is Control F. Uh, it didn't seem to do anything. This, for some reason, when I have it in this video window, it's all jacked up. I wonder why. Um, game trailer window. I wonder why the game trailer window is jacked up in this view. That sucks. See, this view is perfectly fine. And if I go into normal, the view is perfectly fine. Um, this view is fine. Full screen trailer is fine. Full screen trailer with small video window for some reason is zoomed the hell in and I cannot figure out why it is. Uh, let's see, it's locked. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm gonna try to resize this and see if I resize it one time, will it now work from this point forward? Okay, so there we go. So now that is resized. So let me go back to normal. Okay, normal seems fine. Full screen trailer seems fine. And now small window seems fine. Yay! Everything seems kind of good. Okay, so yeah, this is unknown fate. So what is the thought process here? Is this a game that we're going to want? It's got Toby eye tracking. So I guess if you have a Star VR headset, you might be able to experience Toby eye tracking right now, right? Doesn't Star VR have Toby eye tracking? I think this looks kind of cool. It's only $12, $13, right? Uh, looks kind of cool. I guess we'll gotta, we have to wait and see what the initial reviews are for this game. But yeah, this doesn't look too bad. And it kind of came out of nowhere. I, we continue to get VR games on a regular basis. Games like Unknown Fate, this game was delayed forever and a day, and now it is finally available, and it was just kind of bam. 
I wonder if this is a good idea for a developer to do this. Do you think it's a good idea for a developer to just like out of the blue come out with a game? Do you think they get that hype factor of like, holy shit, unknown fate, it's available, dude, we gotta jump on it. They get that excitement of just coming out of the blue but would it have been better if maybe two weeks ago they had a trailer that said coming out September 6th, you know, and made a big deal like, hey, this is coming out September 6th. Phil Yarn says, Anthony, maybe a Discord channel would be good for the community show. It absolutely would be. And guess what, Phil Yarn, your, your prayers will be answered. We will have a Discord channel. We are moving to a new location in the near future. I have this game trailer way too loud. Yeah, we're moving to a new channel. Right now, you guys are on the VR Game Rankings YouTube channel. We're actually gonna move to a new channel. I will announce that when I can announce that. I'm working on the logo right now. I'm working on a logo for VR Game Rankings that will be connected to this logo as well. And I also need to work on some new intro outro stuff. So lots of stuff is going to be uh, is in the mix. But we're going to be moving to this new channel very soon before the month of September is over. Absolutely. And I figure we'll start a discord then under the name of this new channel under the name of the new show basically. And um, so all of that is coming. So basically just asking for patience in regards to discord just patience and it'll all be good um let's see yeah so that is the discord thing so don't don't worry about that discord is coming i know you young millennials i know you love the discords i screwed around with discord a little bit like when i first heard about it i was screwing around with it like there is a vr game rankings it's on discord i could hop on discord with vr game rankings but there were certain things about it that kind of irritated me and i stopped using discord um, but I know, I know it's what everybody's into. Everybody loves Discord, so I know I got to do it. But what is your thoughts, guys, on Unknown Fate? Is this a game that registers with you at all? Or, or are you thinking Winlands 2 next week and you don't want to blow $13 on this when you're going to grab Winlands 2 next week? Or, or you just bought Torn. You just bought Torn. You haven't finished Torn. Are you going to pay 13 bucks? for unknown fate so those are kind of some of the questions that we have out there but why don't we go and switch to full screen web browser for a second okay over here this is stardust vr and i did see an announcement about this it was on the vive subreddit you can see here this is coming on october 5th the developer is last in oni the publisher is Frozen Dreams. It is called Stardust VR. And this guy, for those that don't know, this guy made a duck hunt thing way back in the days of early VR. He made this little duck hunt. And you can see here, we have some different pictures of Stardust VR. I tried to search for a trailer for this on YouTube. All I could find was Stardust Ultra related stuff. I could not find this guy's trailer on YouTube. But this is a new game that they're, they're talking about this on the Vive subreddit. This is uh, Stardust VR. Looks very colorful. Looks interesting. So this is kind of cool. But if I type in here Unknown Fate, see we can see Unknown Fate here is $12.00. And 74 cents here in the US. The normal price is $15. It is norm, yeah, it's normally $15. And this promotion is in effect until September 13th. And Unknown Fate, I don't know, this looks kind of cool. You know, here's some different screenshots of it that uh, looks kind of like a surreal, kind of interesting environment. I kind of like the look of it. It kind of looks like the, um, you know, in Stranger Things, like the Underworld or whatever, the Upside Down World, kind of looks kind of surrealish in that sort of style. No user reviews yet. This is what I'm waiting on. See, user reviews. I will try to contact Mars Lit, and I'll try to get a preview code for this so I can talk about this. There is a game, however, there is a game, however, that I can talk about 
that is releasing today and I actually played it. This is the reason why my audio was screwed up because I was still in Oculus mode with my audio. I have to remember whenever I start OBS to switch back to regular normal audio that I'm all good. But I was playing a game today that I can talk about that actually releases today. Let me grab this trailer. Uh, let's see, I think it's in my regular folder here. Okay, so there is a game called Submerged VR Escape the Room. And I did play this today. I'm going to put this on full screen trailer and give it a little bit of audio. Oh wait, that's desktop audio. So this is Submerged VR Escape the Room. It is by Blue Entropy Studios. And this is available today, ladies and gentlemen. And you can get this for four bucks. It's 20% off. It is four bucks and it is available today. And I did play this. And um, I played it right before we started the show. And uh, it's okay, you know, it's okay. I was in this little room. It, it's definitely room scale. The, the cool thing about Submerge VR Escape the Room is it is very, very room scale. You have to stand in the middle of your play space. It has a little blue square that shows up at the beginning and it says go step into the middle of your play space. So you have to do that. You have to stand in the middle of your play space and then you're in this like underwater, uh, well, Actually, it's not underwater at all. You're in like a elevator chute type of thing. And you're just looking around at stuff. And then you start to hit different buttons. And then all of a sudden, water starts coming out. And the water starts off very slowly. And they're initially like, this is the very beginning. And then water starts, see, you'll see water down there at your ankles or down there, there at your feet. And then the water starts coming down. And then you start activating like these different buttons and these different levers and you're trying to make different things happen. And then that bar thing comes across, the water starts filling up. And if you get low, like if you duck down and you go underwater, the sound changes, it kind of changes the sound. It's another one of these escape the room things. My big question is, this is only $4, but is there a lot of other stuff going on besides just that one room that I was in? Or is that the only thing? Like, is that the whole entire thing? So I don't know about Submerge VR Escape the Room. But see, if we go over here to the web browser, I have it over here. We can see Submerged. Uh, this is Blue Entropy Studios. This is the this is the Steam page for this. And it is four bucks. You know, it's four bucks. There are no user reviews. I haven't played enough of it to give a review. But like here, we could take a look at these pictures here. Um, and I'm curious, okay, that's six of six screenshots. Um, I don't know. I mean, based on these screenshots, all they're showing is that one room. And so if all it is, is that one room, that is kind of disappointing for, I mean, well, it's only four bucks. It's only four bucks, but I was kind of thinking maybe there were multiple scenarios. So it might just be that one single room. So I don't know how hyped I'd be on this. But it did come out today. Little small games like this did come out. VR Roundtable, full disclosure, VR Roundtable got a code for this. I did not pay any money for this. But you know, as I was playing it, the one thing that I did like is how the water was coming up. I thought to myself... You could have a real escape room game once we have like some type of waterproof headset or maybe if you had um, the headset is like wrapped in some type of plastic thing where where basically no water like maybe 
Maybe you're inside some type of deal and the water will like go up to your chest, but it won't go up higher. But maybe you don't know that when the game starts. Could you imagine going to a VR arcade where they put you inside some type of thing and they're like, okay, in this experience, you need to wear a bathing suit and you need to just stand in one spot and just enjoy the experience. You'll have fun with the experience. And they have the VR headset like all kind of wrapped up in plastic, kind of. And, and then water starts raising up and it could raise up at the exact level that it's raising up in the game. And then every lever that you're touching, you're actually using your physical hands and you're actually touching these levers. This is not an impossible thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an impossible thing. VR arcades, if they want to be really freaking cool in next level, now you're not going to want to duck, dick, duck, um, you're not going to want to duck down underwater with your VR headset. And see, that is the danger for a VR arcade operator because you can tell the guy, look, here's what I want you to do: stand here, um, you know, don't don't duck any lower, you know, make sure you stay uh, standing up straight. And the person could forget about it and they get so into the experience. We've seen how many videos have we seen of people they put on a headset. They take off running like they're freaking in a football stadium. We saw that one video where that lady runs into the wall. People don't freaking, people don't respect boundaries, man. So I don't know if you could do this. You'd have to have something physically that would prevent the person from dipping their headset underwater. But I think it still could be done in VR. <laughs> Jim Hall says, Anthony has all these VR fantasies, all fun and games until the first person dies. Well, yeah, honestly, my dream job, do you guys know what my dream job would be? My dream job would be to work for some type of company that wants to push the boundaries of VR arcades and lo location-based VR entertainment. Basically kind of like the void, except I want to work for the Pepsi to the voids Coke. You know, I want to work for the competitor, somebody that wants to come up. Seriously, I will do this. Like this is what I would love to do. I'd love to work with actual programmers designing room scale type things with levers and buttons and trying to test how much immersion can you possibly get this is really what i want to do jim hall you hit the nail on the button yes this is my fantasy this is what i want to work on so if anybody out there is working on a vr arcade in california where you want to go next level with that shit you want to submerge people in a tank with a real live great white shark you know if you want to do some crazy stuff hit me up info at vrgamerankings.com Definitely shoot me an email. This is really what I want to do. Tezram says, and then the player drowns in real life. Uh, Hybrid Energy says, yeah, no thanks, Anthony. You're not submerging me. Fear of drowning sucks. Hey, I've got a fear of drowning as well, but you can guarantee that the person is not going to drown because you can have cameras that are inside this thing and you could have an operator that is watching the person. I mean, they're making sure that the person is not going to go underwater and all those kinds of things. You can do it. It could happen. Shark with pucks. Yeah, you get a real great white shark and you put some type of harness on it with some underwater vibe tracking pucks and you're good to go. Full body tracking for a great white shark. Um, hey, Anthony, Phil and I talked about tea time golf. Really worth checking out. Played it until I dropped last night. What is the developer's name, Chris Gold? I'll try to look up a trailer for that. Um, yeah. But I, there's a lot of cool things you can do with a VR arcade experience, like real body stuff, touching levers, moving levers, having sensations, sensation of water, sensation of wind, heat, uh, rumbling, bass. There's just so many things that can be done. It, it would be super awesome. But anyway, this is a brand new game. It is available today. I did try it. It's okay. It's, it's not a bad game. Whoops, I'm switching my thing up here. Okay, so what I want to do is let's... Okay, oh, Barker's Crest Studio. Yeah, I've heard of those guys. You know, they have this this game, Tea Time Golf. It's on Windows Mixed Reality, right? That is a Windows Mixed Reality game as well. Um, let me go over... Let's see. Hold on a sec. I'm looking that up. Um, Tea Time Golf. So this is on Steam. 
Um, so we can go over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is Tea Time Golf. I'm taking a look at this. Oh, this came out on August 31st. Holy smokes. So this is like a new release. This just came out. Here's web browser with small video window. Yeah, so this just came out on August 31st. Barker's Crest Studio. Uh, whoops, oops, I got to remember to go over here. And let's see, this is $9. It is 10% off. The promotion actually ends in less than a day. So you got to be careful here if you want to buy tea, tea Time Golf. But Barker's Crest Studio is the developer. So I'm going to go back to normal mode. And yeah, what I am going to try to do, I am going to try to grab a trailer for that. Because that does look kind of interesting. Um, now i got to find out where is my... Okay, here we are. Okay, Barker's Crest Studio. Let's see if we can grab a trailer for Tea Time Golf. <laughs> Yes, we do have a trailer that just came out five days ago. Holy smokers. So yeah, there's lots of stuff going on, ladies and gentlemen. It is kind of hyped. Oops, I gotta turn the volume down on this Tea Time Golf. That trailer is loud as can be. So I am trying to grab that video right now via 4K Video Downloader, and we should have that soon, and we can check that out full screen styly. But let me get back into chat what people are talking about over here. Hybrid Energy says, when you can hire some guy to hit you with a bat in real life when you get hit in Skyrim VR. That's actually an interesting idea, Hybrid Energy. And that is something else I do want to explore. I've thought about this idea of having a live action game where you would have actors think of westworld okay think of westworld seriously this is something that could happen in the future this is something that's going to happen in the next 20 ish years you're going to be able to have a westworld experience where you're in vr and there's going to be people that are that are actually the actors and they're going to be in the experience with you and their full bodies are going to be tracked and maybe they're going to be miked and you can hear them talk. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to have to do all of that. But trust me, this is going to happen, folks. We're going to be in experiences. It's going to be expensive. You're going to pay a lot of money to get into an experience like this. But it is going to be freaking really awesome. So, yeah, there's... I mean, I'm telling you, folks, it is some unlimited stuff that is going to pop off. Anything that you can think of related with VR is going to happen. Think about prostitution. <laughs> I mean, think you go to you go to freaking Nevada or whatever where prostitution is legal. Think think about what's going to happen there. Oh man, the only thing that sucks with this tea time golf trailer is it is the wrong size, and so that is going to screw everything up. See, I'd have to convert it to 1080p. But let's go ahead and go to the game. Let's go to the full screen trailer. So yeah, yeah, this is going to be off. So I will have to resize my trailer after this. But yeah, this is Tea Time Golf. Let's check this out. Ah, so it's got like multiplayer action. It looks like a Nintendo Wii. It's like Nintendo Wii Golf on the Vive and Rift. Eight player online. Yeah, I'm down for some of this. I'm going to have to get a hold of these peeps. But yeah, I plan on getting this very soon and trying this out because this is a cool game that you could play with a group of people. Because playing a golf game is kind of relaxing you know you just play through a couple of holes you're mostly just going to be chatting with people really is what's really going to happen but uh yeah hybrid energy says tea time after tea time needs full bodies you basically got your head you got your hands so jim hall in chat does have an interesting topic william shatner warns we've got to be really careful about vr 
the dangers of VR. I saw this. Let me see if I can find this. Um, I did see a story about William Shatner and the dangers of VR, and that is a good topic that we can get into. So let's actually check that out, shall we? So here is the web browser. And so, yeah, that immediately kills the video of the trailer. And you can see here, William Shatner on virtual reality. We've got to be really careful. What a young, handsome man he was. William Shatner back in the days was a pimp for the future. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to switch over to my web browser with small video window. And here's what he has to say about VR right here. He's talking about it and he says, it's so real. It's the stuff of nightmares. We've got to be really careful because you could put somebody into a psychosis. Shatner recently told The Guardian. He says that uh, in the book, he has a book, I guess a memoir. In the book, he discusses getting himself captured digitally with everything necessary to enable technicians to make his image move and speak realistically. So we will have Shatner forever. Shatner will live forever, he jokes. And of course, there was that one episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 4, Episode 2, where Wesley comes face to face with his long dead father, just lots of stuff like that. So this is an interesting topic. It really is. William Shatner on virtual reality. We've got to be really careful. And of course, this is Upload VR. So ladies and gentlemen, if I am going to use a lot of this stuff, I should say, you know, definitely check out Upload VR, check out some of their stories. They are one of the biggest VR websites that we have right about now. And the funny thing too is, if you look at this story right here on William Shatner, you go down here, there's this story, Chris Hardwick, VR addiction is going to be a problem. Now this was from a long time ago, but I saw this William Shatner story yesterday, and then I thought, let me check out this Chris Hardwick story. And he had some interesting stuff to say about this as well. This guy obviously is in some controversies with like some type of sexual harassment thing or something like that. I'm not gonna get into all of that. But one of the things he talks about is ever since the movie Lawnmower Man, we've been promised that there be this virtual wonderscape that we could exist in. And he says, I do think there are dangers to it because the world is a dirty place and VR can be engineered to be everything we would want it to be. Why would you ever leave that if you're constantly being stimulated in the most pleasurable way possible? That is Chris Hardwick. He's talking about how it is a valid concern. And he says, I feel like as humans, we're already predisposed to want to detach from reality. I hope the good outweighs the bad. I believe it does. But just knowing the, nature's, the nature of humans, I think it's going to be a problem. Yeah, honestly, I mean, straight up, I agree with Chris Hardwick in this situation. From the standpoint, I agree with it. And it goes back, now we get the tea time audio back. I gotta, I gotta learn how to manage all of this. You know what, I'm gonna have to make a normal version, a version like this, but where it puts my little web browser right in a box like that. So I gotta have to do another one of thing, <laughs> these things. Hybrid Energy says, damn it Hardwick, don't ruin the VR party. Paul Smith, I'm already addicted to VR, but I'm okay with that. Hybrid Energy says, speaking of warnings, I don't think the anti-porn people and agenda people know about it yet. It's going to be a shocker, especially with AR. Yeah, oh yeah, they don't know the half of it. They haven't heard of it yet. We're flying under the radar. This is actually kind of good. Maybe it's good that VR has not become a big thing because it's going to allow it to plant its roots so deep that when all of the fear mongers go, oh my God, murder simulator. You guys wanna talk about a murder simulator? Let's talk about a murder simulator. Hold on a second here. I'm gonna throw on a, another trailer. You wanna talk about murder simu simulator? Um, one sec here. Yeah, so I will have to resize this because of the damn tea time video is not 1080p. Can everybody please make their videos in 1080p for the love of bejesus? Okay, so Firewall Zero Hour, you want to talk about a murder simulator? I continue to play Firewall Zero Hour 
And I got to tell you, folks, this is firewall. Oh, man, it, I have to resize this as well. Yeah, so I do. I have some growing pains to learn here. I know this is 1080p, though, so once I get these things resized, it should be good. But the thing about Firewall Zero Hour and, and a murder simulator is, honestly, I was playing this, and I was thinking to myself, um, I was playing Firewall Zero Hour, and I'm in there with my gun, and I'm playing this game, and I'm really getting into it. And like I hear a noise, and I turn around, and it's like, oh, shit, there's somebody behind me shooting me. And I'm going down these hallways and I'm looking for human bodies to target and I'm looking for heads to target. And I can easily see how a fear monger or type would latch on. Like, like wait till the true hardcore fear mongers get a load of something like Firewall Zero Hour. You know, they're at some kind of party and everybody's putting people in VR and they get put in there with the gun and they're holding the gun and they're walking down a hallway and they're looking for a human. And, and those carpets do look absolutely gorgeous. Much love to First Contact Entertainment. You did a beautiful job with those carpets. Those are the kind of carpets you'd see like at Caesar's Palace or something in Vegas. Um, but yeah, no, this is an issue Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a major issue going soon. Fun fact, I seen Hardwick on Married with Children. How effing old is that guy? Yeah, dude, Chris Hardwick is my age. He's my age, so I just revealed my age. Um, Hardwick is an old dude, but dude, is he pretending that he's not old? And he's doing a damn good job of it. So much love to Chris Hardwick from that standpoint. Um, but no, you know what my take is? on the future of VR and like on William Shatner and, and all of this kind of stuff in terms of this is going to be a problem. You know, VR addiction is going to be a problem. And going back to the William Shatner story, this is real. This is a real issue. And my personal take on this Honestly, I fear for humanity. If you want to know my true beliefs on this, I truly fear for humanity because this stuff is going to get so effing good that it's exactly like what Chris Hardwick was speaking to. That you're going to be in these virtual realities that are going to be so much better nicer and enjoyable and pleasurable they're going to be tickling our pleasure sensors in so many different ways that people are going to you know there's that new podcast f reality what a great name for a new podcast it's like f reality why do i want to be in in normal reality when i can be in this virtual reality that is so dialed in it is so incredible but people are still going to have to have jobs right you're still going to have to make money so that you can support your super fancy equipment that has you you know your full body suit with all kinds of little sensations I mean, the player one world that that is inevitable, the player one world future that is absolutely inevitable, all of that is coming. Now, the good news is, the good news is I can enjoy VR right now and not have to worry about the fact that this will ruin humanity as we know, as we know it, humanity as we know it is pretty much doomed because of VR and AR, although we can think a different thought. Here's a thought that we could think. Can you absolutely prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that we are not in some type of virtual reality right now? Like, is there a way to absolutely prove without question that we are in virtual reality right now? For example, imagine this future 200 years from now, they have this incredible virtual reality game that you can sign up for, but it is a full body experience rea virtual reality game where you'll basically experience the life of a real life human and you'll, you'll feel all the sensations and you won't realize that you're in an outside world. I mean, is that so impossible to imagine that they could bypass your memory or wipe your memory and give you the memory of somebody and they're dialed into your neuron circuits or whatever and you are experiencing all the sensations you really believe it? So is that not completely impossible? I don't know. We could be in VR right now. So who's to say that making these incredible, beautiful VR worlds that we're eventually going to get lost into and never return from, who's to say that 
that isn't an inevitable future that we need to head towards anyways. I've talked about it before. I said, do you guys want to know what is the answer? Yeah, Roy and Rick and Morty. Exactly. It's Roy and Rick and Morty. Sounds like the beginnings of a horror movie, Anthony. I am Rutz. Dude, this is where we're going, man. I hate to tell you this, but this is where we're going. I believe like if you look at the Fermi paradox, the Fermi paradox basically says you've got these millions and billions and trillions of planets and some of these planets are near a sun and some of these planets are in the Goldilocks zone and some of these planets have liquid water. And if you just do simple math, there should be thousands upon thousands of alien civilizations that should be visiting us all the time. We should walk outside and look up in the sky and be seeing spaceships all over the goddamn place because there should be so many alien civilizations visiting us at all times. Now, the answer to this question, well, there's two possible answers, maybe three possible answers. Answer number one is the aliens are actually there. We just can't see their ships. They got good ass cloning technology and there are gigantic mother ships everywhere and little other kind of ships zooming around and they're cloaked. That's one possible answer. Answer number two is that the aliens have created such next level VR with full body immersion that they don't give an F. They don't give an F about searching the galaxy. They're more interested in going into their incredible worlds that they're already in, the aliens are experiencing. So they don't care. That's one possible answer. And then answer number three is like, we're the first advanced civilization. There has to be a first, you know, in this great gigantic huge universe galaxies, multiple universes, there has to be a first civilization. Now the odds that we are the first is so freaking astronomical, but who knows, there is a first, there has to be a first. Fluke says, space is big, really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-boggling big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemist, but that's just peanuts when it comes to space. Yeah, space is super big. But anybody that brings up, this is what a lot of scientists will bring up, why we don't see aliens, is they will say, well, the reason you don't see aliens is because, yeah, space is just too damn big. It's just too long. It just simply takes too long to get from one star to another. That's why we don't see aliens. But here's my number one answer to that. My number one answer is, you don't think aliens are going to build a ship that is basically a city where multiple generations, like generations after generations, live on this city, and this city is a moving city, and it's traveling near the speed of light, but not quite the speed of light, and they're living on this freaking city, generations of generations. So yeah, it would take forever to get from one sun to another, but you're telling me there aren't mother ships that would be heading and they would eventually get there and generations after generations would eventually get there? I mean, it makes sense. Come on, what are we talking about here? <laughs> the Rex Terra says, what's the name of your new channel again? Alex Jones, yeah, kind of. New show name, shit show. Yeah, so we went off the rails there. We went completely off the rails. And blame it on this guy. Blame it on William Shatner. We've got to be really careful. So I'm trying to bring it back on rails. Let's get back on rails. And let's see here. Did I have some additional stories that I wanted to bring up? Did I have any additional videos that I wanted to bring up? Let's see. I wanted to look. Oh, you know what? I do have a minor story to bring up real quick. And that is Wolfenstein 3D. Um, I played more of this yesterday. In fact, guys, one of the things that I'm trying to do is I want to start doing some Let's Plays. And I wanted to record video of this. I actually set it up to record video of Wolfenstein 3D. And I was able to record it and I had my voice and I had, I put myself in just a tiny little video window in the corner and then I had full screen for the gameplay. But the problem was I was playing it as soon as I hit record in OBS, it was like, ch -ch -ch -ch. It, it was like framey as hell. It was absolutely horrible. It was unusable. But I do want to start doing Let's Plays. And this is, um, oh man, I grabbed the wrong version of this video. I need to grab the short version where it just shows the guy playing. Okay, hold on a second here. Main fan, the guy. Yeah, it shows the guy, which is main fan. 
Um, I grabbed the wrong one. Let's see here if I can grab the right one. Uh, one sec here. I might have del Oh no, I have it. Okay, this is the one I wanted. This is the one I wanted where it's actual gameplay. This is Mame Fan. He's playing Wolfenstein 3D. So I played more of this last night. I got farther and further into it with the German Shepherds and the machine guns and the other higher level guys. And I got to stage two and all this. Are you guys playing this? Because if you have any interest whatsoever in Compound, like if you were jazzed about, ooh, Compound, there's this game Compound, 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 Compound. If you're hyped about that, you absolutely got to play this. Like if you have a Vive, you should have already downloaded this already. If you have an Oculus Rift, now you should be downloading it because they do have a legit version now that works absolutely great. You guys are crazy if you're not playing this because it is fun as hell. It works great. The tracking is perfect. It is retro gaming tourism. Now, of course, if you're like 27 years old and you have no memory, no knowledge whatsoever of Wolfenstein 3D, this game that we're looking at right here, ladies and gentlemen, this game is like the granddaddy of the first person shooter. This is where the first person shooter came from, basically. Like if you watched a historical video where they talk about first-person shooters, they're going to talk about some other games before this because they're going to try to be hipster like that. But the but the truth of the matter is, is this really this really kicked off the first-person shooter, and then Doom, you know, obviously cemented the first-person shooter, and Doom came off of the back of this. But this was before Doom. This is Wolfenstein 3D. Even you millennials should play some of this for a little while, just so you can know where Firewall Zero Hour came from. This was like the first Firewall Zero Hour, and then now we have Firewall Zero Hour. This is the history. And the coolest thing about this is you could put like a real retro nerd into this thing in VR and you can basically say, bro, we are now inside your video game. Your video game from 1992 that you were super into on your computer, we are literally inside the goddamn game now, like fully inside the game, not our full body yet. Just, you know, we're a ghost with a hand, but we're holding a gun. And it's a pixelated gun, and we can look at it, and it looks really cool. Fluke says, I don't have any nostalgia for Wolfenstein. I got my PC a couple of weeks before Doom, so it was that and Shadowcaster that were my first FPS games. You know, yeah, so I guess even non-millennials might not be in, because they just, they, they have no history with Wolfenstein. But even if you don't have a history with Wolfenstein, if you've ever played Compound, you want to play this. Now, Fuzzy Dragon says, I thought you've never played Compound. Oh, I've played Compound. I've played pl plenty of Compound, but I've just played the demo. I haven't played the full version. But I'll tell you what. Oh, Burt Reynolds is dead. 82 years old. Breaking news. Burt Reynolds. Smokey and the Bandit. My boy. That's unfortunate. Burt Reynolds was a very cool guy. Um, Gary Haylock had the original floppy disc of Wolfenstein 3D. He's 55 years old. Hey man, no problem, dude. I hope that I am playing all of this stuff at 55 as well. I am not quite 55, but eventually I'm going to get there and I hope that I am enjoying this shit as well. Um, Bert is gone. Rest in peace, Bert Reynolds. Um, but let's see here. Was there any other little stories I wanted to get into? I just wanted to mention this because I was playing this last night. I had a hell of a lot of fun playing it last night. And those of you that are sleeping, if you guys are sleeping on this, do not sleep on it. It is well worth the download. It's well worth five minutes of your time. Now, the, really the biggest question, the biggest question with it, I'm just going to put on a random trailer right now. Um, the biggest question is, should we be paying money to id Software and Bethesda and Zenimax like what's the reality of us playing this guy's mod? Like, how is this legal? How has it not been shut down? How is it still available on itch.io? You know, it's kind of crazy to me. Um, the longest yard, like when I, when I try to think about, let me see if I can grab, actually, here's something I can test folks. Well, I can go into the web browser, of course. Let me, um, what is your all time favorite Burt Reynolds movie?
Yeah, I would say The Longest Yard is probably my favorite Burt Reynolds movie. So let's go ahead and bounce over here. Yeah, here's our boy uh, Burt Reynolds. The original The Longest Yard, not the remake with Andy Sandler. It's <laughs> They got a lot of these Andy Sandler uh, pictures in here. I got to be careful with the not safe for work type shit. Um, but yeah, that's Burt Reynolds, man. The longest yard. I like, like this picture right here. I re really remember that guy. He was a really good asshole in the original movie. Um, but yeah, that's, these are some of the, and then Smokey and the Bandit, Smokey and the Bandit, Burt Reynolds. That's the other stuff that comes to mind when I think about Burt Reynolds. Let me go to Smokey and the Bandit. And yeah, this this is the other one. And then what was the one where he had like the chimpanzee or whatever? What was the one where Burt Reynolds had a chimp? Was that part of this too? Or was it one of the Smokey and the Bandits? But dude, Burt Reynolds, I mean, you know what this guy is famous for? This guy is famous for that freaking mustache. I mean, he was the king when it came to that mustache. Nobody had a mustache like Burt. I mean, Burt Reynolds had the number one mustache on planet Earth. And uh, Smokey and the Bandit Blu-ray. Yeah, so pour one out for our boy uh, Burt Reynolds. How unfortunate. Man, chat is going crazy over here. It's going really fast. Um, so some people are talking about the old games that they started off with. Vimpo Nex is in chat. He says, I started with Pong. And, you know, I kind of started with Pong. Jim Hall says, Half-Life was a game changer. Remember installing it in the sound of those sirens. Epic. Paradise Decay says, I told people on Reddit to download it before it was taken down, got shot down in flames, and told it's freeware. So, oh, really? So is Wolfenstein 3D, is it like freeware? Like, oh, it's okay. Everybody can have it. So if it's freeware, the Wolfenstein mod includes the free shareware version of the game. All right, then then hey, we can all feel perfectly fine for playing the shit out of it because you really should play the shit out of it. It is damn good. I'm telling you guys, if, if anybody enjoyed Compound at all, play Wolfenstein. You might have to get a little bit further. It starts off really slow, but definitely try it. Okay, so anyways, I can tell you right now that I am starving. And we have been going for more than an hour, but I thought I could, um, let's go to upload VR. Let's just look at uh, what are the, the biggest stories are there right now. So these are the biggest stories that we have right now. Hands on, Windlands 2 had you fighting robots and ignoring gravity. That is um, Windlands 2 next week. And good news, ladies and gentlemen, VR Roundtable. We have already received some preview code, I believe, for Windlands 2. Now, I don't know what is embargoed and what isn't embargoed, but I am definitely chomping at the bit to play some Windlands 2, which I might be able to play a little bit of that. I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this. So I probably shouldn't be saying this. Of course, they're talking about their 100 VR games. Now, they're going to do it in such a way that you're going to click on like 25 pages to go through their 100 games. Or you can go to VR Game Rankings and just get 200 of the best uh, Oculus Rift games, 200 of the best HTC Vive games. Uh, the Unity CEO, he's, oh, this is kind of interesting. I mean, he's saying we haven't seen a consumer launch yet. Like, like VR hasn't really started yet. He's talking about VR and AR. And I kind of agree with him from the standpoint that there's a part of me that thinks, you know how we're waiting on Oculus Santa Cruz? There's a part of me that thinks... Like, that is the real beginning of VR. The moment that Santa Cruz is on sale and available. And basically what I'm talking about is I'm talking about standalone wireless, six degrees of freedom on the headset and controllers, legit hand presence, and pretty decent graphical power. Like, at least up to vanilla PlayStation VR graphical power capabilities. That is kind of the real beginning of VR. I kind of agree with John Riccatello to a slight degree from that standpoint. Oh, here's a news. This is news. This is absolute news. HTC Vive Pro, 650 bucks at Micro Center. But here's the downside to Micro Center, ladies and gentlemen. The downside is 
there are very few of these. Like I'd have to fly down to LA. I believe there's a micro center somewhere in Southern California. We used to have a micro center somewhere near San Jose. And if I was gonna build a brand new PC, Micro Center always has the best prices on Intel CPUs and motherboards and usually stuff like that. I would literally dr drive to San Jose to the Micro Center and build my PC off of a lot of stuff that I would buy there because they would have the best deals. So yeah, you can get a Vibe Pro for 650, but good luck having a Micro Center anywhere near where the hell you are. Beat Saber, this is kind of news. It's news from a standpoint that, yeah, the Beat Saber developers, they are working on PSVR full time, finally, finally they're working on it, and that it will arrive sometime in 2018, sometime in 2018. Like, dude, get this game out. If Beat Saber isn't available at least two weeks prior to Thanksgiving, you guys have seriously failed the entire VR community. Yeah, I'm putting some pressure on Hyperbolic Magnetism and Sony, Shuhei Yoshida, and all of you guys. Beat Saber absolutely, positively must be available two weeks prior to Thanksgiving. You know why? Because this is going to be the big Thanksgiving game. People are going to bring, and, and I encourage anyone that is listening to this right now, if you own a PSVR setup, when you go to Thanksgiving, you need to bring Beat Saber with you and go there and, and hook it up there and let people play Beat Saber. This is going to be, so this absolutely has to be available at least before Thanksgiving. Personally, I'd like to see it later this month, but it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. I'd like to see it maybe around Halloween, which would be very late October. That maybe has a chance to happen, but man, they have got to get this game out before Thanksgiving. How many people were ambassadors for VR last Thanksgiving? We need you guys to do this again. Okay, Puzzle Game Blind hits Rift Vive and PSVR this month, September 18th. This is old news. If you've been watching this show, I've already covered all of this. I've covered all of that. So now let's go to Road to VR and we'll just see what the latest news stories. Road to VR. Um, so Road to VR, um, Echo Combat, yeah, the, oh, the beta weekend has started as soon as this show is over, which is going to be in minutes because I am starving like you wouldn't believe. As soon as this show is over, absolutely, if you haven't peeped it out, check this out. Um, bet blind, we know about that. Windlands 2 pre-orders are live. I'm going to be playing Windlands 2 later today, guys. This, this is the, this is what I get for like giving of myself to the VR community is these rare moments where I get to enjoy a beautiful thing like Windlands 2 ahead of time. There are some fringe benefits. There are some fringe benefits. Okay, Zero Killed is arriving on Vive and Rift this month. Wait, let me check this story out. Because, um, is there a date for this? This is September 6th. Okay, so this is new. This is new info, ladies and gentle bots. New info, Zero Killed, is arriving. I'm trying to see, like, is there a date? Release date announcement. Do I have to click on their video to get the date? What's the date? Let's see. Um, oh, September 26th. Did we already have the date for this? Zero killed September 26. I'm not sure if we've already had the date, but man, there's like zero caliber, zero killed. There's so many freaking games. This is um, from ING, ING, Ignig, Ignigabit, whatever the heck is the name of that. They, they changed their name. They used to be VR Vizio. Now they're Ignigabit. But yeah, zero killed has been dated. So that is kind of cool. That is September 26th. So September continues to get hyped. We are continuing to get more and more games coming. Hybrid Energy says there is a micro center near me in the Chicago Burbs. Oh, you are chilling. Chris Gould says that Unity guy looks tired. Well, that's John Riccatello. He's been through a lot. Um, Hybrid Energy says, and a Fry's Electronics. You're truly blessed if you have both of those. I do have a Fry's. That's where I've got my, I got a display port to HDMI adapter, which I needed to have these two screens going. I actually drove to my Fry's yesterday. 
Uh, Fluke Rogi says it kind of feels like it will go the same route as mobile phones. First it was, who needs one? Then you had the yuppie crowd that had them. And then it felt like you woke up one day and everyone had one. Yeah, it, it's definitely going to go that way. Uh, Shurzad Khan City says, beat Saber with move controllers. Sad face, sad face, sad face. Dude, PSVR has a pretty decent cone of vision. The real key with PlayStation VR, this is my tip for everybody out there, is take your PS4 camera and put it a little bit higher and angle it down at the head and the hand area of the person. And then you got a pretty good cone of vision that you're coming down with. That's the way to do it. Beat Saber will work. Hopefully, all of you people that do bring your PSVRs to Thanksgiving, you'll mount the camera right and you'll do PSVR proud. We got to hope for that. Um, Bullet Ape says, has there been price details leaked for Santa Cruz? Saw some YouTube where dude spoke of 300 there's no way. You're not going to see it at 300 The lowest possible price for Santa Cruz, the absolute lowest, would be $399.99. I don't see any way it's going to be down to 300 Honestly, I believe it should be 599 because I believe it should have a Snapdragon 435 It really should. And that should jump its price up to 599 which I know that's harsh. But the early adopters will scoop it up, and then they'll be able to lower the price. They'll get it down to $549, then they'll get it down to $499. Because Santa Cruz has got to stick around for a couple of years before it'll be replaced. So I don't know. I don't know. It's it's debatable. But it's not going to be $300. That's Oculus Go. You know, that is Oculus Go with a hell of a lot of built-in storage. But you know what, guys? We have been going for a little while here. There, there are some new stories. Um, you know, the PlayStation VR bundles, Andy Circus is going to star as an orc like motion capture character. Big shocker there. Witching Tower, we saw that trailer. And, you know, kind of some news today is Unknown Fate. The release of it just came out of the blue. Shocker of shockers. I do kind of want to check that out. I want to check out Tea Time Golf. But you know what I really want to check out? Winlands 2, baby. So I will be checking that out. Don't know if I'll be able to talk about it for a number of days, but holy smokes, I definitely want to get into that. All righty, let me throw on my uh, outro trailer, I guess. Um, I'm so discombobulated today. I didn't even do my intro trailer. And I can do full screen on this. Thank you, everybody, for checking out VR Game Rankings. Be sure to check out the website. Of course, subscribe to the channel, like the video, all those things. I don't have any sound here, so I'll do this one more time. Yeah, everybody, what is up? This is VR Game Rankings YouTube channel. Check out the website, subscribe, like the video, all that good stuff. And we will, of course, see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Tomorrow's Friday. It's already Friday. And, of course, Echo Combat. Jump into the beta. Check that out. All right, folks. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy. Later.